Welcome to the Chaos Plan, where the odds may not always be in your favor. Thank you for joining us for another episode. As always, we would like to thank Adrian Sanabria for the intro music of the Chaos Plan, and the in-game music was brought to you by TabletopAudio.com. If you have any questions about what we're doing and how we come up with the rules, maps, places, anything like that, check out our website, www.TheAdventuringGuild.com, and click on the Chaos Plan tab up at the top. This will also give rules on character creation and how you can join the show. To join, just visit our Patreon page and donate $1 a month to get in on these games. The more people we have, the more games we can run because schedules will line up better. And by joining, you are guaranteed a spot in this campaign. We will be running lots of different groups through, hopefully very soon, and since we're keeping it on an active timeline, we should be able to keep everybody managed as far as who is playing where and when. If you are unable to join but enjoy the show, please leave us a five-star review as that is how we will be able to get in front of more people and have more wonderful, talented people join the show. And please feel free to share any of our posts on your social media of choice. We are on Facebook and Twitter. For both of those, just search for The Adventuring Guild and we'll pop up one way or another. So thank you very much and we hope you enjoy the show. Thank you once again for joining us for another episode of The Chaos Plan, where the odds may not always be in your favor. This is going to be the first group game for this group of adventurers. So we are back in time a little bit to the 17th of planting, and our very own guild artisan Brayden will be DMing. And I think he said something about a TPK and a couple of Tarasks or something like that. I don't remember. So I'll let him take it away. I really can't confirm or deny any of that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, welcome. I'm incredibly nervous, but let's just jump into it. Uh, so you've all managed to have, have some interesting and very intriguing experiences over the last few days within Port City, and the festival has now come and gone. Uh, the streets of Port City are beginning to slow down as everyone's falling back into their routines. A lot of the tourists have begun leaving the city. Uh, that is, of course, not to say that things are, the city is like devoid of anything to do, as there are still hundreds and hundreds of jobs available at the job boards and within the major field. So before you go out and uh, try to make your fortune with the city, is there anything your characters would like to accomplish first? I think I'm pretty much already uh, spoken for a little bit with what I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to try and run out and... Uh, as soon as I'm able to get to the Mages Guild in the portal area, I'm going to try and get a group together and do my best to uh, have everybody sign that guild charter at some point so we can start getting a move on with uh, getting a guild actually formed. But for right now, I'd probably just grab some food and then meander that way at some point. Sure. The Tinker's Guild probably has some sort of cafeteria area where uh, strange robot-like creatures... Uh, operate a sort of food line where <laughs> they sort of butter one slice of bread, pass it on, get, but it, uh, put like jam on it, and then they pass it on to make like a PBJ or something. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, how much time would we have in the morning? Uh, it's ultimately up to you. I might see if I have any unwilling, but well, actually willing victims, uh, willing to make a pack. Okay. Where would you be searching for these willing victims? Um, it doesn't actually say I have. I'd probably be picking one of the heavily populated areas. So maybe where everyone, like the market area. I know it's much quieter than it was. Well, in saying that, it's still a heavily populated city. So tons of people around, but it's not shoulder to shoulder throughout the streets like you were uh, experiencing in the last couple of days. So, let's see. Um, ooh, and that is apparently 80%. So one interested person. Has Bob explained how this works? Uh, I listened in, but may I have a refresher? Yep, basically he just, uh, you play whatever willing victim 
and uh, negotiate basically to... He's trying to convince you to become a warlock of some entity or another. So just play, you know, somebody looking to be a warlock. Yeah, it's making warlocks of either Ivex the Fire Lord, Basil the Celestial, Scorpio the Desert King, or Balagos the Ancient Red Dragon. Awesome. All right, well, roll a D100 for me to see who you come across. All right. Do the metal die. 14. 14. A flump. Uh, So walking through the streets ahead of you, looking a bit down on this park, appears to be a mountain dwarf with a very long and flowing black beard. A bald head man probably within uh, his like third century on the on uh, Earth. Uh, He's he's looking a bit uh, sad. All right, so I'll just kind of. I'll turn on over fairly casually, just put my arm around his shoulder and be like, friend, you look like you could use the pick-me-up of a sentry. He, uh, you probably would have heard as he is sort of walking up, he's muttering to himself under his breath, saying, um, I'm gonna fire me or I'm a hard worker and they fuck you. And you, as you put your arm around him and, uh, greet him, he just sort of looks up to you with a bit of surprise. I, I happen to know what it's like to have a bad day, have a bad day bad month, bad year. And I have friends who might be able to turn things around for you. Have you ever... You know, like a job or... Power. I, I barter and sell power. Is that something that would interest you? I mean, it depends on what you're talking about. Well, you, you've been around the block a time or two. You know of warlocks, right? I think my mom told me something about warlocks when I was only uh, 20 years old. Well, I'll give you a free refresher. It's very simple. There are powerful beings in our world. Just blows your mind, kind of hurts your eyes, powerful beings. And they're limited in what they can do and where they can go. So they pick special, very select individuals. And they bless them with a bit of their power. So they can go out and work on their behalf while still living their own lives. Don't, don't kid yourself. You, you get to do what you want to do still. Don't worry. It definitely helps with the job board and being having that magical power is the gift. And sometimes they take quite powerful physical form too. It, it can really help you fit into any job. You see his, uh, the sort of frown on his face slowly inverting after you mention that he's special and that it'll help him get a job. And he's slowly sort of turning around to you, like nodding his head with a smile. So I have to ask, do you have any affinities, any any places that you just fit right in? I, I spend a bit of time around the temple district. Well, I'm more talking, do you have any pull towards the celestial or the fire or possibly the desert? The fire? That could help me forge. Oh, could it? I, I know a Fire Lord, and also, because that's just not strong enough, I also know an ancient red dragon, and not just any red dragon, the one that resides over the Fire Isle. Hey, you see him just sort of like, his mind blown as his eyes open up wide, looking towards you. So, I've met a store for two, I myself are from, from the Fire Isle, and I think that that ancient red dragon's fire on your side forging would be pretty strong, wouldn't you agree? Uh, I'd be able to get back at those who fired me. Oh, you could fire them, and I mean that quite literally. I give him a knowing wink. <laughs> <laughs> Making arsonists <laughs> perfect. You're welcome. Wouldn't be the first one this week. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, if you have just an hour of time, I can I can get you an introduction. Would that be something you'd want? He uh sort of stops nodding and thinks to himself and says, uh, if it helps me get back on them and gets me a job, I'll, I'll do anything, yeah. All right. And so I'll pull him aside to <laughs> non-discreet of a location that I can because I believe it spiritually summons Balagos the Fire Drake, the ancient red dragon. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Takes an hour. Um, if interrupted, I have to see the con save and creates a zone of truth while it happens. But to call up an entity, you must be within a space large enough 
to fit their special form. Oh man, the name to the red dot. <laughs> um, I do have access to the Shadow Guild safe houses and such, to warehouses, I'm guessing. Sure, yeah, you could uh, make your way down into the uh, sewers or something along those lines that enters through to one of the. Uh, I'll pick the quietest one I can think of and or see. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, we'll say there's a well nearby. Sort of uh, take the time to make sure no one's around and leap down into it. He follows after you, uh, making your way through a small set of tunnels. You eventually get to a fairly large open area. And so then I begin my ritual, and there in front of him, in all his power, is the spectral form of Valago. <laughs> <laughs> he is bewildered. <laughs> so it doesn't say the specifics of that, so we'll just say, yeah, I. Fields are made, contracts are signed. <laughs> Another warlock is made. <laughs> this is the most interesting character. <laughs> okay, wait. Did, uh, so, <laughs> to backtrack a little bit, what, Go for you, it. what kind of charisma role did you just make to convince this man to come down into the sewer with you <laughs> to, like, <laughs> to sign a deal with an evil god? <laughs> Not a god, it's alive around. Um, I have to make a... Yeah. I have to make a... I guess a percentage... Percentile roll, and I either have to... Depending on the roll, I either have to make a persuasion check, or it's pretty much... I find someone who is so down that they are just like, sign me up for whatever. The market... Multi-level marketing, you know, schemes dream individual. <laughs> oh, so you just... So if you get a good percentile roll. So this is so this is just you like in game wise, you're like you're going around throughout the city and like you might spot someone that's like the perfect mark, you might not. Exactly. Okay. And so in this case I hit the perfect mark. That makes more sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so then yeah the guy is just absolutely game for whatever I say. <laughs> feels bad, but at the same time feels so <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Sorry, boss, but that guy's probably going to go and burn down a, uh, some, some dwarven place of business. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then that's, yeah, that's how it works. It, that's, it's fairly easy to do in a heavily populated area, but then along the road in the wilderness, like, my odds are very slim. <laughs> Well, and you have to make those contracts in order to even use your magic book. It's like that that's for every contract you sign, you can use a single effect. And then once it's used, you have to make another contract kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So it, I'm making like packs, but there's definite needs for it, too, which is why I tried to do it before we go out. Because this gives me a pretty good magic power when we go to adventure. I was just thinking, as soon as you come into contact with Dandabin and start preaching him this magical path spell, he's just going to be nodding his head like, yes, anything. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, that, that takes up what I was going to do this morning. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Yeah, I was, uh, my character is still pretty new to the city, um, pretty new to the whole, like, metropolitan area, um, in fact, so... I would have just been kind of wandering around, exploring, um, getting breakfast wherever, you know, people seem to congregate, but, um, yeah, mostly just exploring, looking around at local job boards for, um, things to do around town, but, um, yeah, nothing really in particular I wanted to get done before, before we actually got together. Alright, uh, roll a B6 for me as you sort of make your way towards the job boards, uh, number of adventurer types are around there, you see, um... That is a five. Alright. Uh, you look across the adventuring board, um, the job board, sorry, and see a number of different, uh, quest opportunities for you. Um, one particular that you, uh, notice is that someone has posted about a stealth mission to salvage a lost caravan. Sort of piques, piques your attention. Roll a d20 for me. That's a ten. Uh, the reward of which is 10 gold. Oh boy, I, I'm terrible at stealth. <laughs> does, it say, does it say what it's for, or it, it, to recover some... To recover what? To recover a lost caravan. Yeah, I'm going to pass on it. I'm going to move All on. Right. There, are, there are a number of other sort of ones. There's, uh, there's a, uh, a posting that 
asked for someone or a group of people to enter a bandit camp and rescue a merchant that has been captured. There is a uh, posting asking for someone to map a cavern and uh, potentially interfere with the running of a thieves guild operating out of the cavern. I'll probably just do that second one. I would uh, I would want to inquire about like if someone's in danger. I would uh, yeah, I'd be interested in that. All right. So you grab the one where uh, the merchant has been captured. Yeah, is there like contact information on it, or...? Uh, yeah, there'd be a name at the bottom who uh, identifies himself as... Let's roll a random check to find a name. Uh, Dargo. Dargo? Dargo of the Merchant Guild. I believe that's right. Dargo, like an R in there. D-A-G-O. D-A-G-O, oh. okay. It is Dargo. That was not Australian out of the name. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go find Dago there. Alright, heading towards the merchant guild. A uh, number of merchants are still sort of peddling their wares, trying to sell off the last of what they had uh, during the festival. Uh, if you wanted to stop at any, there's armor, weaponry, uh, different knickknacks, odds and ends of all sorts. I don't have a lot of money, so I'm gonna go see Dago on <laughs> Okay. Uh, heading to the Merchant Guild, uh, you enter through the uh, large front doors and uh, find a receptionist area uh, asking for Dargo. Eventually you are met by a tiefling man who approaches you uh, from one of the ends of the Merchant Guild itself, walking over. He says, uh, I am Dargo, what do you think? Oh, great. I saw a, I saw a poster. Uh, I hear you have a job. Indeed I do. Indeed I do. There are things I need returned to me, particularly one of my underlings who is a merchant who I am collecting some interest from his business. It is very important for me for him to be returned. He has uh, seemingly been captured. Right, I, uh, I understand. Um, do you know where they are? Well, last I heard of him, he was traveling north along the road. They Road that is known for treacherous activity. Right, very well. If you just mark it on my map, I can, I can be sure to uh, be sure to find them. What, what kind of, how many bandits are you expecting? Is it, is it going to be a large number, or can I do it myself, or do I need, do I need more people? Well, from what I know, I sent a few armored escorts with him. So, if you're confident in your ability, taking on a number of bandits, sure, go ahead by yourself. But if not. I would probably seek to acquire some help. Mm -hmm. I see. This is well, a most, most important business to me, so if you are to get this done, I can promise the sum of, uh, we'll say he's offering around six gold for this. Now if I were to procure some, some people to, uh, to help me, would that be two or three gold apiece, or...? How many people are you expecting to bring along with you? I can't afford to pay for an arm. Well, if this man is as important as you say he is, can I roll a... can I roll a persuasion? Sure, go ahead. Alright, that is... Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's the light of that. Eleven. Uh, he'll sort of give you a side eye, looking like he's trying to preserve every last coin he has, but he will say, uh, uh... As long as there is no more than ten people, I can offer two gold per person. Yes, that, uh, that sounds acceptable. Um, yes, if you'll give me just the rest of the information, I'll, uh, I'll find some people. I'll, I'll get on it right away. Sure, yeah, he'll, uh, point to a location on your map to the north. Bob, I'm not sure what's north, but I'm gonna improv something here. Uh, he'll point to a little sort of mountain pass range where a number of, uh, it looks like there's a number of forests and things like that sort of uh, skirting the edge of the road itself. So perfect place for an ambush, he suspects. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go out and I'm going to try and find some people to do a job. All right. All right. I'd you imagine I'd be coming out of a sewer about now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you were in the merchant shop. So, uh, you see, <laughs> as you walk out of the Merchant's Guild, there's a sort of central, 
a central well within the merchant's guild, we'll say, and uh, climbing out of it. Uh, do you want to describe your character, Rhino? Sure thing. So I'm a, I'm fairly slender and tall, uh, dark, almost charcoaly, but with blue thin skin, and I wear, I guess, um, I think it's leather armor with a, my hair is actually just low burning blue flame, and I have eyes to match. And I have a dragon tattoo across my right forearm, which right now would be glowing fairly nice. Um, I'd be probably starting to shuffle my uh, robe kind of thing to cover it just a little bit. And yeah. And what would Alistair look like? Uh, Dave, not that uh, I would see him right now, Cherno, sorry. But uh, just for the listeners at home who maybe have um, a want of refresher. Yeah, so Alstafat is a brass dragon. Uh, he's walking around in chainmail, so he's got kind of a, like, uh, more of a robe undergarment covered in this chainmail. And uh, you can kind of see the emblems of his clan kind of peeking out under his armor. So it's kind of the standard Bahamut uh, dragon um, symbology. So that kind of thing. He's a... Um, you know, he's a little bit more on the thunder side, but um, he'll be easy enough to go out some damage if he needs to, but he's also got, um, like, the normal religious symbols, um, you know, a little utility belt, perhaps, um, as well as a shield, so. Awesome. I'm not going to lie, I kind of picture almost halfway, like a dragonborn boom knight. Yeah. yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Alright, I, so you did remind me, I also would be wearing a clergy robe, because I am part of the... Temple of Knowledge. Nice. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> That's all anyone needs to know. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, so you you definitely see this strange man exiting the well in the center of the Guild. If you want to do anything about that, otherwise heading towards either the Majors Guild to uh, look around the portals for potential adventuring partners would potentially also be a a good use of time. Yeah, I'm assuming he looks a little bit more capable than like the average person walking around. Yeah, you see, you would see like a a couple of like elderly people, a large uh, rotund man walking uh, through the merchant guild as well. And you take the pick of which would be the better adventuring partner, and you definitely think the uh, the strange flame man would probably be a better choice. Yeah, I'm gonna walk up to him. You see Hi, a dragonborn approach you. Uh, I'll talk to him in Draconic. Hi, my friend. What can I do for you? Hello. Um, my name is Alstafat. I, I, I happen to notice you look equipped for battle. Are you uh, are you an adventurer by chance? Uh, not as of yet, but I've been looking into it. I... Are you looking for a job? I am. Okay, do you have one? <laughs> Well, by proxy, perhaps. Um, you see, I was just talking to a merchant, and it seems that um, one of his friends seemed to have got caught in a bandit trap, and uh, they need someone to retrieve him. And I'll throw my arm over your shoulder like we're your best of friends and be like, I think we can make a deal. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Tell me more. Sign me up. Let's let's go save a man, save a man's gold or what else? Yes. Yeah, so it seems that he was traveling with a couple of armed guards when he was when he was taken. So uh, you, you you do look capable, but uh, I would feel more confident if we had perhaps another person or two with us. The more the merrier, and let's make some friends. To the major guild, I hear there's a good good pickings for adventurers around there. And a flame lights up in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, so I'll let it Not concerning at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Steph and Bob, would you be heading the uh, job boards or major skills? Uh, first, Steph, what would you be doing in the morning? Uh, I would be up in early, uh, make, doing maintenance on my gear, making sure they're working fine. And as per my agreement with the Drunk Mug Inn's uh, keeper, Isla, I would be spending the early hours of the morning chopping wood for firewood and 
after getting a decent enough breakfast but nothing fancy i would be taking my poster that i took from the notice notice board and start making my way to the fighters guild and okay. that's where that will be it. and bob may you give me a refresher on this notice yep uh it, he was gonna train a group of spearmen um I think three days uh, was the term of the contract. Uh, I think something like that. So uh, sometime in the next three days, uh, he would be training some spearmen at the Fighters Guild. Yep. All right. Yeah. So you make your way over to traveling for around say 15, 20 minutes, uh, getting over that way. Oh wait, you are are you stationed within the Fighters Guild? Sir? No, uh, currently not part of Fighters Guild. Uh, okay. I believe this was going to be into membership, but uh, okay. All right. So heading towards the Fighters Guild, you're eventually still early, but there are people out uh, readying themselves and beginning like a sparring session of sort. Do you uh, do you head on inside and uh, look for these spearmen that you are to train? He, uh, yeah, I will be heading inside, but I would be yeah going to the receptionist to make sure they find the right people to train. Sure. Yeah. Upon entering in, you see a uh, elderly man who appears to be a veteran of sorts. He's uh, got scars across his face where it looks like he's taken a swipe from a claw of some kind. Uh, he kind of gives you a smile and says, uh, "You're up mighty early, my friend." <sighs> Just part of their job, trying to be professional about it. I like that. What well, can I help you with? I take out the job posting and I show it to him. I'm here for the training. Uh, I've been told out for the training of a bunch of new recruits, making sure they know which point to end, which point <laughs> to point at the enemy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pointing the hilt at the enemy or the pommels. There's a feat. Pommels yeah. are powerful. Just have to make sure they yeah. take that polearm master feat so they can actually do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the man will say, uh, "Yeah, yeah, they're stationed within here. I'll go. If you just want to go and get yourself ready in the uh, in the sand pits, I will do that." Uh, I look around. Where's that? Where is that again? Uh, he points off to a set of doors that lead down a staircase and uh, says, Just down there. Okay, I give Should him I, I give him a oh, salute sorry. and then make my way. Alright, he says, uh, Should have everything you need down there for him, so don't worry too much. And he uh, walks out from behind the desk and heads towards the uh, rooms and whatnot of the Fighters Guild to wake up the new recruits who are ready for training with you. Okay, I make my way. I, I don't have anything to prepare, but yeah, I'll just be waiting for them to show up. Alright, uh, eventually coming down the stairs a few minutes later, you would see some younger sort of fighters uh, readying themselves, sort of limbering up after just waking up, their eyes still a bit red and uh, filled with sleep and whatnot. One of them yawn, uh, but the veteran sort of comes down behind them, gives you a nod, uh, pushes them into the room as you're waiting in the sand pits. Uh, there's a number of weapon racks around with all sorts of different weaponry, and uh, you point them in the direction of the spears as they pick them up and meet you in the center of the sand pits, ready for your instruction. Roll a D4. On a one to two, it'll be one hour. Three to four, it'll be two hours. I that, that's a two. All right, just a single hour. So the introductory to Spearmanship 101 will be run by you uh, for these new recruits. They all look sort of a bit, uh, bit frightened and apprehensive of what they're about to do, but ready to learn nonetheless. Sure. All right, yeah, you get the uh, new recruits sort of excitedly using their spears and uh, get them in different uh, groups or groupings where they can uh, practice different maneuvers on each other within the safety of the pits themselves. And uh, you've managed to complete your class without any issue. Now uh, they're all picking up the 
basics of spearmanship and uh, the class ends as the veteran sort of opens the door once more, sounding a bell for an hour past. What uh, would you like to do after that? Uh, Bob, would that be the entire... That, would that be my shift? Uh, no, uh, for yeah. The job yeah, that could be your shift for today. Um, I think in our, I think in your intro, it was three days uh, that you had to do it for. So that could be day one of three. Not a problem. Okay. All right. Now, would he get paid per day, or does he get paid by the I, at the end of it all? I honestly don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I think it was one gold a day. So then, probably you'd get paid one gold each day you did it. I. I'm probably sure. As the uh, the veteran sort of wait, the uh, young students return up the stairs, and as you pass by him, he puts a single gold piece in your hand and uh, thanks you for a job well done. All right, I'll see you tomorrow then. See you then. All the best for today. Okay. Oh, uh, what time of the day did it be? Uh, since you got up fairly early, it'd only be at around maybe. What, what time around would you get up? Maybe like 5 a.m.? I would probably head out from the inn around 7 a.m. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So it's probably around 8, 8.30 right now. Okay. I guess I would, um, since I finished early, I would go back to the notice board and try to listen in on people. All right. So since you are up fairly early, would it? Uh, Rhino and Dave, would what character? Uh, sorry, what time would your characters be awakening? Um, just a little bit after uh, sunrise for me, probably. Okay, I would have taken and, some time to breakfast probably before heading out. So, no, I'd have probably been out of the door at seven a.m. All right. So, okay, after so my full heading. Oh, sorry, got it. I was just gonna say after my pack and everything was done, it would have been like. I probably would have run into Alphapat at about 8.30. Alright, well that's perfect, thank you for that. Uh, as, <laughs> Steph, as you make your way to the notice board, uh, you see a number of interesting, or two interesting characters making their way uh, out in that direction as well, uh, heading to try and find a, well, I assume you guys would be heading to try and find some more people to assist you. Yes, yeah. The tiefling said something about the uh, major skill. Yeah, and I knew that's where you can find good people for this kind of thing. All right. So, uh, would you be heading to the major skill, uh, Steph, or the sort of job posting board? Yeah, I'll I'll be heading to the job posting board for now. All right. Okay. So you guys would not cross paths, but. Uh, the job posting board is like right there outside the mages guild. So it would oh, be, perfect. yeah, it would basically be like across the street. The Mages Guild portal would be kind of like the center square or whatever, and then one of the buildings on the outside of the square would be kind of the job posting board area. All right. So as you are approaching, uh, Alpha, you see a number of interesting people around, a few sort of looking for a job posting spots. I'd say at this point you'd probably be heading this way as well, would you not? Yeah, yeah, as soon as I got myself together in the morning, I would have headed over that way and started looking for groups. Alright, yeah, you see a blonde man uh, looking around, a bit bewildered by all the around here. There's sort of wielding all kinds of legendary weapons of sorts. Uh, one man, as I heard in the last episode, is actually wielding a buster sword and a <laughs> slung over his shoulder. <laughs> uh, a number of other interesting looking objects are being held and they, a lot of people here appear to be very, very seasoned adventurers, but you do see a couple of people sort of roaming around that uh, looking fresh to the, uh, to the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To the sort of adventuring life. Would we see him walking up? Uh, there's a fair amount of people here, but you would somewhat the... Uh, district at one point and sort of walking forward. He appears to be of a similar sort of uh, look or experience level to you. Someone does that maybe... Look, does he look bad already or does he look like a dude? What what does your character look like? Then? Oh, sorry. I thought we were talking about the uh, guy with the buster sword. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would be... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, ooh, this blonde-haired guy with a buster sword. Let's hear about him. Um, <laughs> no, so uh, I'd be in, like, dark burgundy red uh, robes, and I would have a black mask on, and the uh, mask would be kind of in, not like Plague Doctor type raven, but it would be a raven mask. And I would probably have my packed weapon out, my glaive, uh, using it kind of as a walking stick, almost. I would probably conjure it a little bit smaller, so it would be probably head height, not a whole lot above. Um, and I would just be kind of looking around, trying to... Uh, get a feel for everything, so I would be definitely keeping a distance from everybody, like, not getting super close, but I would be looking around pretty warily. Yeah, so as you, uh, you would definitely see someone sort of looking around and, uh, looking yeah, looking like they are uh, sort of perusing this area. I would kind of give a nudge and, uh, and point towards Bob and say, Jesus, what, what about that, what about that one? Oh, I'm not a tiefling, sorry, I'm, uh... Wait, what? What the I'm heck? Gena- fire Genasty. I just happen to be on fire. <laughs> um, I would definitely be pulled towards Bob, because I've got good experience with people with slaves. <laughs> <laughs> and Beverly. <laughs> Alright, fire first. Um. <laughs> hey, you should call him hot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he'd be a great fit, and he looks <laughs> new enough that we wouldn't even have to tell him the full price. <laughs> <laughs> I work in management. I'm used to people not telling me the whole story. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally. If I saw uh, a group, you know, kind of near a job board, looking like they're, you know, converging or whatever, you know, having a conversation, I would probably approach. Um, and ask if there's any decent jobs out that they know of today or if they're looking for anybody to help them out. Uh, yes, actually. Um, I was given a job by a merchant to uh, retrieve one of his kidnapped friends that seemed uh, to pays about two gold apiece, uh, if you're interested. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd be more than willing to. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind uh, after we get done with that. I, I may have a job for you guys in return, but yes, let's let us uh, uh, take care of this lost merchant. Uh, do you already have the paperwork ready to go? Uh, do we all need to go in and sign it? What do we need to do? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing to decide yet. Very short. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming we come back with the merchant. Fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> he said he'd pay up to ten of us, two gold apiece. I okay. feel like we should find at least eight more people. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, oh my god. So immediately, like, I like, my hair would explode in flames for a second. You know, there might be more money if we get a smaller group. <laughs> and here I'm trying to do, and here I'm trying to do math in my head. I'm like, up to ten people, there's four here, you want eight more, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, Seth, uh, you uh, walk through the, uh, <laughs> the gates and looking for the job board, you do see a number of people actually standing around and almost blocking your view. Okay, uh, a very tall woman, about six feet tall, she walks up to you, donned in half plate armor and carrying a slightly longer pole arm longer than the one that Bob is wearing, uh, using. And you can see on the pole arm there is like a flag wrapped around it and it's been secured by a cord. And then she goes, do you mind? You're blocking my way. Oh, I would- Are all of us just tall? Because I'm six feet as well. Nope, I'm short. (laughs) (laughs) I'm five nine, so I'm the shorty in the group. Uh, looking for a job, are you? We might just have an offer for you if you are looking for a group to do a job with. Yes, there's even money. <laughs> <laughs> what? No way! Hey, this is No, but you don't understand. They'll give us money in exchange for service. That's what services are usually for. <laughs> This turtle like takes a step back just to look at you like what? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, Bob, as you uh, actually, who's who's passive perception is the highest? Oh, mine's crap. I've got ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 I got. That that would be. Oh. Oh wow. Yeah. My fourteen actually I like. (laughs) Okay. So Cherno and Arfego, you both hear an elderly voice behind you. Uh, Glancing over your shoulder, you'd see a very little old human lady with a little uh, coin purse going up to a number of adventurers and asking, (laughs) Can you help me? She says, looking up to this, like, the man with the buster sword, and he just sort of, (laughs) no, and walks off. She kind of turns around all defeated and looking up to another group who she asks, Excuse me there, can you help me? And they just kind of, like, turn around and ignore her entirely. I'll just kind of take a half step and be like, don't let those bad clouds get you down. What can, What do you need? A little smile comes across her face and she sort of takes a few shuffle steps forward towards you. Says, um, I don't quite know how to post a job posting, but I need a few strong people to help me. What do you mean by strong? As I look at my tiny little arm. <laughs> Oh, just a couple of capable people, no. And I'll just kind of, like, point to Elsa Pat, be like, this one, like, pointing at him and then at her arrows kind of thing. Oh, yes, he's quite strong, so look. So we've got an arpeggio. Come talk to some of my friends over here. I would kind of whisper to Bob, I wonder if this one may want to. <laughs> I snort. I, I, I don't yeah. audibly laugh. I just snort a little bit. She is holding a little coin purse in front of her. How small is the coin purse? Like, <laughs> uh, it's, it's like a fist size. A perception check on number of coins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get, all right, go for it. All right. I was being sarcastic, but I'll take it. Ooh, that is a 22. Oh, man. Uh... She looks like she's holding a fair amount of coin. Whether or not it is coppers, silvers, or gold is unbeknown to you, but it appears to be fairly filled. I'll just do two thumbs up with little flames coming out of my thumb. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, She sort of hesitantly steps forward. Uh, You're all a lot taller than she is. She has a lot of uh, hunch in her back, and she's sort of like looking up at you. She says, um... I'm just looking for a few people that can just lend me a bit of a hand. I don't want to be a nuisance if you have better things to do. Yeah, I would, like, squat down, like, a little bit so that I'm more on eye level with her. And I would say, I'd be more than happy to help, and I'm sure my friends here, and I'd kind of gesture around, would be willing to help, too. What do you need help with? Oh, you're a very kind man. Thank you so much. It's sort of... Her hand, like, comes out shaking and, like, your cheek and then retracts. <laughs> <laughs> she says, um, I work at an orphanage. I'm the main matron there. And I'm just worried about some of the children and the things they're getting to. Okay, uh, how can we be of assistance then? I don't know if I can say it out here. Maybe if you were to join me in the orphanage, it would be a bit more uh, private. Yeah, I'd be willing to follow her. I'm a little bit cautious, thinking (laughs) something might be up. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, lady, (laughs) come with me. Exactly. Uh, If if I if I see above the door free candy or anything like that, I'm turning away and running. (laughs) Um. Yeah, I'm just following. I'm, 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 I'm going. That's totally fine. <laughs> she says, uh, I can pay you each a bit of gold. I, I inherited a little recently, and I've been saving just for this occasion. Can I roll an insight? <laughs> I would like sure. to roll an insight as well. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Did she inherit it from murder? <laughs> 15 for me? No, no, 18. Oh. 17, sorry. 20, 23. 23. 23. Man. Uh, you can tell she's definitely telling the truth. She has inherited money and has money to give. She appears like she's being... Her, her, the way her body language is saying it looks like she's willing to offer a fair amount. This is fairly important to her. 
Oh, how, uh, what does she look like in, in terms of uh, she shabby or she looks uh, she, she's well kept ish she looks like she's she definitely lives in like the, the more common area of the city or a lower class area. Uh, having said that she she did say that she is the mate, main matron at a orphanage so she uh, puts on a sort of professional appearance ish as well as she can for uh, coming from like a lower class area just follow her straight to the orphanage and hope we don't get shanked okay <laughs> so uh, you head towards following the old lady she puts on a brisk pace of about 15 feet around <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you slowly trail behind her. Um, every now and then, you'll see a little child run by with a toy in their hand. She'll just sort of smile and wave at them, and they'll wave back and say, um, "Hi, Marjorie, or Matron Marjorie. Nice to see you." And she she just says, uh, "Be safe out here, children," and like gives them a wave. Can uh, I try to enter in her ear and like try and get more information on what's happening before we actually arrive? Now that we're, like, out of the open a little bit. Yeah, uh, you eventually make your way into the dock district, and uh, you can definitely sort of kneel down and whisper in her ear as she's sort of, like, keeping a brisk pace for her age. Yes, what, 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 are, we, what are we doing here? What, 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 do you, what do they need help with? That's just a few things I'm a bit worried about out here. Is it one of the children, or...? Yeah, uh, it's more all of the children. The docks is just not safe for them anymore, I'm afraid. Oh, I see. So the I... money. <laughs> 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 I, I'll gently kind of pull her back. There'll be money, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says, um, she sort of looks around hesitantly. There's like a number of sort of strong arm types in one of the uh, alleyways nearby and she just sort of like pulls you along a bit further. Continuing to walk she sort of looks back and says um, I can offer between four and score each. I just need a bit to feed the children is all. So I am so very surprised. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that other merchant guy is ripping us off. <laughs> <laughs> you were right, so the first thing didn't you? I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I'll just shake. It sounded my head. fair to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, you, take eventually, the first <laughs> you eventually come to a sort of medium sized building uh, surrounded by a number of different taverns and sort of shops in this lower class dock area. Uh, you can definitely see the water from where you are, and the sort of smell of the ocean is sort of wafting over the entire city. Uh, the entire of the dock district. Uh, she pulls you into a into the orphanage itself, which is named the uh, sorry the Light Water Orphanage. She sort of cracks the door open and brings you inside. It's very dreary inside, not much uh, decoration around, but uh, the children within seem to be happy and running around playing with toys. So. On the way in, I'm going to move over to Bob and be like, "Do you think it's named that because they might they either sink or swim?" <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at that. <laughs> Got so, so. Tell well, what age range the children are. Sure, give me a perception check. That's a natural one. Oh, <laughs> uh, they're they're all playing so quickly. You can't quite get a glance. I think so. You think they're very young, or they're got, or they're gnomes, or just athletes. <laughs> 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 it's a lot of weird tavern full of small athletes. Yeah. <laughs> all of them are dressed in like little bonnets and stuff, but they're all actually just halflings here. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, she looks to you all and says, uh, Like Kat said, I can offer you between four and six gold, depending on how well you do, but the need to ask you is a bit private, so if it could be left between us, I'd really appreciate it. I nod assent. I says agree. 
Uh, she says, um, recently in the city, or more in the docks, especially after the festival, things have been getting a bit dangerous for the children. I, uh, I hate to say it, but justice hasn't been served recently. I've been asking my guards to go, go and investigate the three gangs that are within the docks, but their business has been wound up in the festival and keeping everyone safe, so they haven't had time. This is a matter that I feel needs attention right now, and I think justice needs to be served, even if it's in the gray area of the law. Put my arm over uh, Arpeggio and be like, We've got a long arm of the law right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say I don't have a problem with, you know, if, if it helps the kids, I don't have a problem with skirting the edges of the law as long as it doesn't get too ridiculous. Um, oh, no. Don't worry. I'm I, sorry I didn't get your names. What are your names? Oh, I'm Bob. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Bob. My name's Marjorie. <laughs> she puts a little hand out for a handshake. And I shake her hand. I'll do some kind of flourishing bow and be like, I am Cherno of Tangor. Oh, the true gentleman. Nice to meet you. And she like puts a hand out for a kiss on the hand. <laughs> I I graciously grab it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. uh, looking around for the others. Right, so uh, I'm off the clock. I uh, give her a pat on the arm. Oh. Uh, really sure. Greeting or heart. It's nice to meet you. I'm you, uh, ma'am. I nod and <laughs> are fed your fairy at your service, my lady. Oh, it is lovely to meet you. I I appreciate you here. I know I I know that there were many many different jobs that you could have got, but you chose me, and I appreciate that. I don't know whether the other jobs would have. Changed for the greater good the city now. So just rest easy knowing that you're going into this to help the children. Uh, she will say, um, recently I've noticed, well, I've heard that there's this strange new drug on the street called Scorch. It's highly addictive and I don't want to see any of the children getting addicted to it, or even being exposed to it. Torch from the fire aisle? Maybe. Honestly, I haven't thought about that. That's a good idea. I hired the right people. You are an investigator. <laughs> uh, I will do my best to laugh on that one and just kind of back up. <laughs> <laughs> For all <that> deception. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ooh, <laughs> that is uh, eight. <laughs> All right. Uh, she says, um, "Oh, well, I know you'll try your best, Demi." But... Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says, um, "Recently, the scorch has been sold, and with the increase in gang activity, I can't help but think." That one of them is responsible for it. What of who? One of the gangs. There's three of them that operate out of the docks. Ah, uh, yes. What are, what are their names? Oh, there's the Slicers. They're ruled over by Peruk Steeljaw. He's a big half ogre brute. And then there's the Greyjacks. They're led by Hafael Hitkel. He's a conniving one. And then there's the old, which are ruled over by Grumwell Midnight Mine. She's a dwarf and berserker. Truly frightening lady. And I'm sure one of them is bringing this stuff in and endangering the children. What's and it called again? Well, uh, what was what? Called Sir Scorch. Yeah. The drug is called Scorch. And the three names. I'm trying to read uh, that too. <laughs> the, the, the gang, the slices are ruled by Taruk, Steeljaw, the Greyjacks, uh, led by Haphael, Iskel, and the Ode, 
O W E D, uh, led by Brumwell Midnight Mine, a dwarven berserker of sorts. Uh, she says, um, Now I know that taking on whole gangs is a bit of a dangerous task, but I, uh, I've got a little ace up my sleeve. What? I've got a little ace up my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls out her power armor and just like full suits up, ready to go. I will join you. I am a knight. <laughs> <laughs> I will be a fetch for like you. Hey, so hey, those little <laughs> ladies with those knitting needles, you gotta be careful for those. You could like take an eye out. Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, as, as she's saying this, you see two children begin running outside. Wait a minute, Castwell. Wait, Sarah. Don't forget your toys before you go play. She, like, waddles over to a little side room and uh, disappears for a few moments, bringing back a stuffed owlbear toy and a little uh, sort of nutcracker doll and uh, puts it in their hands and sort of pats them on the shoulders and says, there you go. Now go enjoy your day. Be careful, please. And they sort of give a nod and say, We will, matron! Then run outside. Just to be awkward, I'm going to say, Oh, I know what I'm getting Amelia for Christmas. <laughs> the little halfling man next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn him. <laughs> no one knows what that means yet. No. Um, but she comes back and says, Oh, sorry for keeping you with me. So... Do you think you're up to it, or is it too much to ask? Nope, I'm 100% ready, or I, I would walk up to her and i say, No, this is a very big thing that needs to be taken care of. If the city guard aren't willing to help out the kids in this orphanage, I know I will. I appreciate it, Bob. I guess I'm in. Oh, thank you, Chana. Um, yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. I appreciate the answers. <laughs> I'm still not sure. Are 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 drugs bad? <laughs> oh, we have, have you ever drugs. seen? Have you ever seen a child of scorch? I have. I'm pretty sure most of our children are scorched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the firehouse. I think that's just called being awake. Yeah. <laughs> she says, Oh, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry. What does the pain say? Do? Well, it puts the, the person who ingests it in a state of euphoria. But if they're given a bad batch, their stomach actually catches fire and burns them from the inside out. Jesus. So it's warm and chilly. As, as I was saying, she, so before she says that, she looks to Arpago and says, uh, uh, are you in now? Uh, I am in one, con- one condition, though. I pull out mm-hmm. some parchment and they can pen and start drafting up a contract. I'll okay. put my hand on your shoulder like, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> my profession is documenter. Contracts are literally all I do. So I just quickly <laughs> pull up one. Like, it takes me one round, I believe, to make a full contract. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Your hand, <laughs> like, lightning across that parchment. You crawl up the greatest of... Just a full agreement that we are going to work to get removed swords from the docks. If it is, you know, done by one of the games, namely the Slicers run by Baruch Fieldjaw, the Greyjacks run by Halfael Piscale, or the Ode by Bromwell Midnight Mine. And, like, it has this, the agreed payment price, all of our names, done. I like how in real life, like, he didn't even, like, meta that. He just, like, knew the names of who they were and everything. Just, like, snap. You are a documenter. <laughs> uh, before, before he... He passes it to Marjorie to look up at the contract and make sure there are no fine prints in it. Who <laughs> <laughs> fine prints at this point? <laughs> there, there's lots of fine prints. It's saying that, yeah, it has to be by one of these things. More or less, caused by one of the games. We'll investigate report back to Marjorie. But we're not responsible for, like, taking on the Shadow Guild or... Oh, oh no. 
Oh, shut up, Caleb. Don't worry. It's painful. <laughs> It'll pay you. I give you uh, a return the card back to... Uh, who signed it again? I'm sorry. No. Uh, before, before she signs it, I'll read. Now, just remember, I know that it's a bit of a grey area, but these people are wanted by the guard, and I mean, if you were to... I don't want to say the word to uh, end their Murder. brain. Are you, are you, is it, she is it sort of like backs into herself and looks down, just sort of gives a, a dull nod. Oh. If you were to uh, take them off the stocks for good, I, I could throw in an extra gold or two, which is what I was saying. We could get up to six gold per person. I made a contract know. with this immediately. <laughs> I I just know that yeah, their their business they are running is not good for the children. And regardless of whether or not they're responsible for bringing in this scorch, they're a absolute menace on the docks. And uh, even if you don't find any, they'll give you the money. I've been saving up a bit. Ever since my husband passed away, he left me a bit of inheritance, and I've been renting out the bottom floor of the orphanage to a couple of nice passerbys who've been giving me some money, so I can afford to pay you even if you don't find the score, but ultimately I would be very thankful if it did. I fully intend on, like, I'll take whatever she's going to pay us, but then I'm probably going to spend that money, like, at the markets or something and send, like, food and stuff straight back to the orphanage. But I don't want to, like, get in... It, it, it's like whenever you go out to eat or something like that with a grandparent or whatever, and there's always an argument at the table that who's going to pay. I'm just going to let her think she's paying and then end up sending it all back one way or another. That's lovely. She will... Well, you haven't told her that, but she's just sort of like... It seems to be taking a liking, definitely. Okay. <laughs> uh, she says, um, uh, once again, what that thing, I've got a bit of an ace up my sleeve. I, uh... Can you explain? And, well, as I said to you, Cherno, they're not involved with the Shadow Scope, and that's because uh, I, I spent most of my money contracting them a bit for some information. And I needed spies to know uh, where exactly these ones are going to be so we can try and properly read the docks of them and the Scorch. It cost me a lot of my inherited husband, but I found out where they're going to be tonight. All three of them. I get that this is important, but anyone else getting a murderous vibe from this lady? (laughs) I feel like most, like... People running orphans are not making shady <laughs> deals with the literal shadows guild. To, uh, well, you know, you know, yeah, well, you know that one uh, from Skyrim, that one orphanage, you know, shadow quest type deal. I'm, I'm totally down with this lady being a little bit murderous. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure murdering drug dealers falls within like the justice category of my like old religious morality. So I'm kind of fine with this. Yeah, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. She she completely hangs her head in shame when through talking talking about it. She's like really shameful, just got her head down and her tone blows. Oh, don't be sad. Some people deserve death. It's better for him. Uh, yeah, well, just, not for them. I just know. For us. No, it's better for us. Much worse for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says, um, I, I just know that. If I can stop some of these children from potentially growing up and joining these gangs or even getting hooked on this scorch, then maybe I'm saving a life or two. So what's what's the lives of these three bad people to to the potential lifetimes of a couple of good children? I think we're all in other than Arpeggio. Are you good with the deal? I he signed the contract. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. First of all, yeah. <laughs> I quickly scribble in after adding the amendment of the extra coin. Okay. <laughs> she just sort of nods understandingly, knowing this is a uh, one of the things that needs to be done to acquire the uh, 
sort of work, workers and sort of adventurers to uh, come to our aid. Okay. Everyone else sign as well? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Shadow contract. <laughs> <laughs> we are all warlocks <laughs> now. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well done, Rhino. You've, you've gotten everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm the most powerful talking to master to live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she will say, um, well, using the cover of the festival last night, and the guards are going to be sort of taking a bit more of a break on the docks. The gang leaders are going to be going about their nefarious businesses. I believe that one of them might be even smuggling in some scorch tonight. Uh, she kind of says, Now, this is what I learned and paid for from the Shadow Guild. Taruk Steeljaw is smuggling in something tonight at the docks. I'm not sure what, but he's got a ship coming in, just a small one, with some cargo. This could potentially be scorched. Scorched, sorry. Uh, she then turns to someone else and begins saying, uh, Rafael Hiskel is meeting with some representative of Faithful. Not exactly sure what they're doing or what they're looking to do. Maybe bringing in Scorch from Faithful. I don't. But they're meeting on top of a warehouse roof in the uh, Merchant Guild warehouses. Uh, that, she says, uh, Rafael Hiskel and a number of, um, oh, sorry, one merchant from, well, not a merchant, a representative of Fateful. Uh, and, and finally, uh, Bromwell Midnight Mine is going to be having a sleepover with the youngest son of Sabot Gen. I believe the son's name is Sardi Shen, or something like that. Uh, Bob, I believe you would know who Bob Shen is, the member of the council. Oh, yeah! She says that his youngest son is uh, Sadi Shen, and Bromwell Midnight Mine is going to be having a sleepover with him at a tavern. Gotcha. She says, um, they're going to be having a sleepover at the shore I sail in and drink. Not sure what her intentions are, but this scorch definitely seems magical, and Sabor Shen is into all sorts of odd magics. Maybe, just maybe, she's using Sardi Shen to work out how to bring this stuff in. I don't know, but one of them is doing it, I know it. I had a one first thing so that nobody's actually suspicious of Turno. I am a clergy of the Knowledge Temple, so contract kind of makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just to reduce some suspicion. Uh, but I guess I would approach her like very, very quietly, though. It, it, do you know of anyone who, any children or anyone who's died of scorch in the last day or so? Oh no, no children have died, but I think, I can't be sure, but from what I've heard, someone got very sick from it. I'm not quite sure who though. That, that's more than okay, thank you. I'm very sorry, I wish I could be more yeah. it, It's good that no one died, nothing to be sorry about. <laughs> um, she says, they're all going to be in different locations, and I know that they're different gangs. Honestly, I think it might be better to, you know, rid, rid the world of them quickly, one after another, otherwise word might spread, and the others might be more defensive. From what I know, they're going to be trying to be acting a little inconspicuous, as there's still a bit of guard activity around, so I can't be certain, but I would assume they wouldn't have all their different gang members with them. I would probably agree with her and say, yeah, you know, something definitely needs to be done about these. Um, but I don't know about taking them out, you know, one after another after another, uh, all in quick succession. But I, I wouldn't say that to her. I would say, oh, yeah, I agree. Something needs to be done. And then after we get out, you know, I would, you know, say, hey, guys, let's sort out what we're actually going to do here. Like, I, I'm i a little bit worried that this lady is, you know, not that she's going to try and push for one way or the other, but, you know, you never discuss the plan of attack in front of the client. You always do that kind of back room. 
So I would probably agree with her so that we can get out of there and start figuring out what we want to do. I just don't know, you know, whether agreeing to kill all three groups all at once is a great idea. So I guess on the way out, I'll be like, we will stick to the deal as we find. Okay, I appreciate it. Come back and get your pay when you're finished up. Sorry to burden you all with this. It is never a burden if there's skin involved. And I'll walk out. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd follow <laughs> close behind. He sort of pats out of that ball and says, um, You're doing a good thing for the children. Thank you. Yep, I would nod back to her and just step outside. I give a polite nod and follow. Thank you so much. Alright, then once the door is closed and we're a little distance away, I would probably say, alright guys, now I know that these guys are bad bandits and all this other kind of stuff and drug dealers and, and stuff like this, but before we go on rampant slaughter, we need to make sure we're doing, you know, we're, we're getting the right people <laughs> before we do that. Like, I'm worried that depending, you know, there might be other people mixed in that may not be 100% bandit members and that kind of stuff, you know? So I think we should maybe try to do a little bit of scouting first, a little bit of recon, figure out, you know, are the people that are all collected the right people that are there before we decide if we're gonna, you know, take off heads or not. Right. What if we just, um, why don't we just try and get some of the scorch in that to see where it came from? Yeah, well, and I look pretty shady enough as it is with my mask and robes and that kind of stuff, so I could probably try and score some Scorch, and uh, at least you know, we'll have a dealer then to go off of. I, I, think, it's, I think it's best I don't join in the investigation because last night I was kind of patrolling the area, so some of the shady people might recognize me. Yeah, good idea. Alright, then I would probably um, I would you know, make a little distance between me and the rest of the group, and I would kind of hang out. Did did the lady say where they were getting Scorch at, or where she saw anybody by it? Oh, just yeah, in the docks? She said the dock. She didn't give a general location. Okay. She gave a general location the docks, not a specific. Okay, I'll probably just then head down towards the uh, I don't want to say like a, a rundown inn or a tavern, but I'll probably go down kind of where there is some of those rundown taverns and, and more of a business types thing. And I'll look super conspicuous like I'm waiting for something or someone or looking to buy or whatever. You know, I'm going to kind of hang out on a corner and, and, you know, look around, you know, hands in my pockets, head down, you know, and then when somebody, you know, l- kind of walks up to me, I'll act like I'm going to do business with them or whatever and see if they offer to sell anything. Alright, yeah, as you begin walking around, you're fairly close to the Shore Eye Sailor Inn that you called the Brumwell Midnight Mine. It's actually... Okay. Uh, that is the closest cabin to you, and it is not guarded by... Uh, sorry, guarded by the, um, the Ode. But there are definitely a lot of sort of rough-looking dwarves kind of walking around, and uh, they appear to be not on edge, but looking like they're more more vigilant than usual. Okay. Then I'd take a, a gold piece out of my pouch, and I'd just kind of, you know, do that deal where you run it along your fingers, you know, kind of play with it, flipping it around in my hand and that kind of stuff, and just kind of look around, like wait for somebody to approach me. So I'll make a perception check for uh, 16. All right, yeah, you see probably two or three dwarves begin taking notice of you moving this gold piece around your hand. They're just across the other side of the road within, like, a small alleyway, and they're kind of giving you a look and a side eye, just talking to each other at a distance, and they slowly begin approaching you. Okay, as they approach all, like, my, my glaive will still be out, but I'm not going to, like, ready it or whatever. I'll just make sure I have a firm grip of it, and, uh... You know, once I get close enough, I'll whisper some along the lines of, uh, trying to score some Scorch. Do you know, uh, anybody or any place near here that I'd be able to do that? Their eyes sort of look at you really shifty. And, uh, roll, roll a persuasion check. Okay. With my plus two in charisma, that comes to a 17. 
All right. They say, um, I don't know if you're new around here, but that's dangerous stuff. And I'll whisper, I'll, you know, just kind of say back, I've dealt with much worse. I used to have slum around in some alchemist shops, and there was some pretty awesome stuff there, too, if you knew what to look for. They kind of give you a side eye and say, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find us somewhere, um, and they kind of, one of them begins, like, backing off and begins all back over the alleyway, and other sort of looks and says, um, have you ever, if you ever paid the dock tax? Yes, I paid. <laughs> <laughs> all right, roll that. Just oh, there is a 12. <laughs> Better than a uh, six. So Hot damn. <laughs> he says, uh, all right, all right, you've paid what is owed. And he sort of gives you a side eye and says, uh, you be careful now. And then turns around and walks back into the alleyway, seemingly getting no response about Scorch, except being told to go, you'll be able to find it somewhere. Huh. Um, does the tavern or whatever look like that? the... Does it look that rough, or does it look like it's a normal business-type tavern just with some less than savory people on the inside? Yeah, the uh, lap auction there. It's it's okay. not not too bad of an establishment, uh, but it's it's definitely got some rough individuals in the lulling around, drinking their worries away. Okay, I'd probably then go in and approach the bartender and say something along the lines of. So I heard that you can get some pretty awesome uh, stuff, and I'll dab that pause and and everything in there uh, somewhere pretty close to here. It's uh, a new thing going around. Uh, any idea on where I could score some of that? Kind of leans in and says, uh, "I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. We are a fine establishment that does not dabble." And he makes a bit of a scene. Some people kind of looking over towards you, but they're too drunk to even really make eye contact with you. Their eyes like buzzing around your silhouette. Okay, I'd, I'd pull out a silver piece and I'd slide it across the bar and I'd say, "Hey, hey, 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 hey! Don't need to get loud. Just wondering what all you got here that behind the bar that isn't in a bottle." He pulls it quickly and pockets it and kind of leans in a bit further. Says, um, "How much are you looking to buy?" That depends on how much you're selling it for. I'm looking for a new person to buy from. My other contact ended up getting picked up by the guild. It's unfortunate. I'll give you a bag for around five silver. I'll squint and say, well, I gave you one already. How does four sound? Uh, roll a persuasion check. <laughs> I know, it's one whole silver. Heating up. I know, right? It's one whole silver piece, but I'm, I'm going to still play the asshole. Uh, that's only a ten. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, "My house, my rules, my friend." All right, I'd, I'd, I'd hand over the five in order to get the bag. All right, uh, you see him sort of kneel down behind the bar, begin like fiddling around with a, a bunch of different things. You hear glasses clinking against each other, uh, like a small door opening, and then he sort of steps up and puts a tiny little bag in front of you. Uh, the leather, sort of little, uh, it's like a piece of leather that's been like bound up with a bit of cotton, uh, little holding bag with something in it inside. Okay, I you know pocket it real quick and uh, say pleasure doing business. I'll be in next time for another drink, and I'll uh, walk out and meet up with the group. All right, yeah, then I'd walk out, meet up with the group, and tell them what all happened. All right, you're watched by probably four or five men. The O that are just sort of keeping their eyes on you as you exit town. Meanwhile, what is doing that? Uh, from from my mercenary background, have I heard about the three gang? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let me just get up. So you would know that the the O are more uh, along the lines assassination sort of stuff but not not sort of in any way a finesse organization they're really more like just open murder uh they are just sort of strong arms bodyguards things of that nature that are kind of up for hire but at the same time they operate on their own and like to 
uh, Rob can sort of take uh, a toll, if you will, from people that so enter their little area of not Basically, they're booties, in a sense. Or muscles. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you'd know that the Greyjacks are a lot more into the sort of scams and the sort of intricate uh, plots that they can then benefit from, like uh, infiltrating uh, shops and whatnot, and then sort of working out broken deals to where they'll get the better end of it and sort of extort the money from the person afterwards. And you know okay. that the slices are just straight up thugs. They don't really have too good of an organization as much as they're just ruling over the sort of southern section of the docks and keep the other gangs out and really just try and sort of rough arm people and take take whatever they can when they can. So they're more likely to try anything new, right? Sure. So, sorry, was the Grey Jacks that were kind of mercenary sort of deal or is that the Ode? The Ode. Okay. I relay this to everyone while we're waiting for Bob. Okay. Now eventually Bob returns with a small packet. <laughs> so who's telling? Yeah, I would I would tell the whole situation about um, tried to make some contacts on the street. The dwarven thugs out there didn't seem to want anything to do with it, but the bartender inside did. Um, and it sounds like it. You have to kind of know that they got it in order to buy it. It wasn't offered. Um, and I'll say that after that, I was definitely watched. I don't know if I was followed though. Uh, back this way, so we may want to be a little bit cautious on our way back that direction. Right? Are you are you sure? It's, are you sure it's legit? Did you actually examine it at all? Now I'm feeling stupid. I uh, did not, so I would definitely pull it out. And I've got proficiency in alchemist kit. So could I roll like an arcana check using the kit and try and identify it? Oh wow! Well, yeah, well, 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 I'm gonna use it. my I'm gonna use my power to form block. Him from fearing ice. All right. All right. Uh, our can- Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'll give you advantage on the book. Oh, awesome. Uh, then that'll bring it up to a twenty-one. All right. Looking at it, you can almost see similarities between this substance and alchemist fire. It's almost like it's a diluted and then dried out mixture of fire. Huh. Yeah, that would Which suck to snort. Directly, because it even being usually alchemist fire even goes to the air, makes it set off, but this seems to be a little bit more stable. Huh. Okay, yeah, then I'm assuming that's the stuff. I don't know. You would, I, you would assume. I don't know. We still can't be sure, right? I, uh, I feel like I should try it. No, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like setting your stomach on fire. I, I caution against it, but I hand him the baggie and prepare cure wounds kind of at my fingertips, ready to go. Oh, you haven't done what I can do yet. I'm, I'm pretty sure fire my stomach is no big deal. <laughs> I, I do hope we're not doing this out in the open. <laughs> <laughs> you can make your way into an alley wave. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, I've, I've got my wallet and everything with me, so I, I, I pull my wallet out, and I uh, get a credit card out and uh, roll up a dollar bill and hand both of them to him. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what the what happened? What that? What happened? Do I die? <laughs> you ingesting it? <laughs> I am ingesting it. All right, roll a constitution saving throw. Do I get advantage since I'm resistant to fire? Sure, why not? <laughs> Does resistance apply to stomachs? Yeah. That's a nat 20. Nice. Oh, nat 20, alright. Uh, so, instead of getting a terrible effect, uh, you feel a slight head rush rapidly and begin losing your balance, but your arms and legs just feel warm. Your fingertips feel like they've got this sort of coursing flame through them that isn't hurting you, but just feels nice, and you're just your eyes are growing sort of tired. Yep. Yep, that's it. No. <laughs> that's as well. <laughs> well, so much for us with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, you fall to the ground and you begin just cradling yourself and just sort of rubbing your arms. Uh, oh, that's with a nat 20 too. Okay. There's no joke. Yeah. Yeah, I just wait for him to come down off of it and I guess we'll go from there. We'll say with the nat 20, you're fairly resistant only after maybe 10 minutes 
you manage to get your wits about you again and the effects slowly wear off your form. All right. You could definitely see that a child who were to ingest this would probably immediately die. All right, well, um, I, I, I suggest we wait until perhaps this man, uh, you know, leaves his, uh, leaves his bar for the night and uh, see what we can find out from him. We can, yeah. Interrogation works, but will that give us enough time to check with everyone? Cause oh yeah, that's true. He we can might not be anything big, and we might be chasing people around all night. I can send my raven familiar to go scope out the other locations and just confirm that they're there, but um, I doubt I'll find out anything super specific from doing that other than, you know, that they're there. Well, we could we could try and interrogate him now. Uh, we don't necessarily have to wait until after, after he gets done, but uh, that requires a little bit more um, subtlety. We could also just see if the guards don't know anything. That's a pretty good idea. Uh, Seth, I feel like we should not form the guards of our murder plan. I, I, I feel like we should <laughs> stick away. Yeah, that's probably... If we go asking about these three gangs, then the very same evening they end up all dead, that may be slightly suspicious. Hmm. Uh, you were saying? Yeah, I was going to say, you should use your contacts in the Fighters Guild to uh, try and figure that out, but like I said, I don't think we want to actually do that now. They would be super suspicious if they turned up dead after asking a bunch of questions. Fair enough. I honestly think we've got this handled. We could probably, you know, set some sort of thing up and at least take out the leader um, of the groups. I think we can run and gun it enough to make this happen. Uh, you, you do remember her telling you, Marjorie, that the they're trying to act inconspicuous, so she believes that they're with a very small force or no force at all trying to keep sort of eyes off them from the guards yeah right so we're we just gonna are we just gonna get all of them then or is that the plan yeah I think I thought we were gonna try and figure out which one of them was selling the scorch but we wanted to just take them all out uh, like she suggested that's fine but it does feel like we're playing into her hand a little bit yeah no I agree I, I totally think we should deal with this first group you know, and then if we need to, we can deal with the rest. Because it'll take a little bit of time for word to spread, you know, that this wasn't just, you know, a rumor that somebody took the group out. You know, so it's not like the everybody will find out right away. So I think we should at least deal with this first group um, and then go from there. Find out whether or not that bartender is in league with all this. But I, I'm assuming he is. I mean, he's right there with you know, kind of in that central area there, so I'm I'm pretty sure that he's involved. I think we should deal with this one first, and then we should kind of go from there. I agree. Right. So, how do we stop them? We interrogate the bartender, um, but when? We're not going to get a better chance. I don't think we can really wait for him to get off duty and do that kind of thing. I, you know, if this is a game, there's always going to be somebody there. I think our, you know, jump in ask him questions. If he doesn't answer them correctly, then we'll start, you know, removing teeth until we get the answers we need. <laughs> well, we could always sneak in the back. Try and get him when he goes back up there to the stock room. Like that. is the third option. Yeah, go for it. I had a snack since I was a kid. If someone died in the last 24 hours, I can still talk to them for an hour. Well, we've got that if we end up needing that. <laughs> If things go sideways in a hurry. Yeah. I'm not I'm, a good first option, but it does work. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and send my familiar kinda of back over there and just keep an eye on movement in and out of the tavern and then I can relay that back to the group and we can, you know, get boots on the ground before it gets too much later in the day. I'm worried if we spend more than a day doing this, you know, you know if this isn't done by tonight. I'm worried, like you said, uh, or like the lady thought, that they'll circle wagons and we'll have a much harder time trying to deal with it. Uh, Are you second over there? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'm asking, uh, from what I know of the gangs, do I know if they have any sigils, insignias that they go by? Uh, they more run by 
may, uh, they're not big enough to where they have like sigils and things to put around it, like a sort of thing. Uh, if they were to get a, like a bit more powerful, you think that potentially they'd have like more organization and whatnot. But right now they're pretty street level, so uh, mm-hmm. running with it going uh, insignia isn't something that they would do. Okay, so no identifying marks. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, the yeah, the only there. thing you would know is that food is nearly made up. What was that? I mean, you got off there a bit. The you, the one thing you would know is that the ode is nearly completely made up of food. Okay. Never mind then. Uh, Bob, you send your familiar over. To- yeah, I'm gonna have my familiar just kind of circle around the front of the bar and. And, you know, look for back entrances or possible ambushes or support that they could call in should a fight break out. All right. Uh, you cast your eyes through your raven eyes, and you see exiting from the bar itself the one of the same dwarves previously talked to you. And he's sort of, like, looking back at the bartender, nodding, and then, like, walks off into the alley once. Okay, I'll probably... I'll have my familiar follow it. If nothing too much has changed other than that one dwarf going out, I'll have my familiar, you know, just kind of tail that guy and uh, uh, return to me once it finds out where the dwarf is going. He he pretty much stops about 10 feet into the alleyway of uh, dwarves that previously did. Uh, Roll a stealth check for me just to make sure you're not spotted. Uh, For the raven? For the raven. Okay. Uh, that's a 15. Uh, welcome 10 over here. So you managed to perk up, uh, looking down over the, over the, uh, sort of congregation of dwarves. You hear the one who exits the bar say, uh, I just had to check with the innkeeper, making sure those people weren't too suspicious. Don't want anyone sneaking in on Brumwell's meter tonight. Okay, yeah, I was sort of like, they sort of nod to each other and then, continue to sort of watch the entrance of the tavern itself. I would relay all that to the group and get their thoughts on it. So what do you guys think about the meeting? Is this something we want to try and crash, or do we want to preemptively take care of this matter before the meeting? Mm-hmm. Well, I think Romwell's looking pretty guilty right about now. Yeah, yeah I'm just thinking, yeah, you know, I'm- if we if we jump it and get it ahead of time, we'll have to complete everything before the meeting time whereas if we wait for the meeting time we could maybe you know keep it from spreading as quickly that something's happened my biggest my biggest is really what do we know about Zabel Shen or Sadie Shen because if she's meeting with Sadie Sadie Shen this might be getting how they get it to the kids and do we want to wait that long for that sleepover yeah probably not probably need to nip this in the bud before it gets any Further out of hand. You do oh, know that you do know that uh, Daddy Shen is actually about twenty years old, so it's not a mark. Clear that up with the world before yeah. we get any controversy on there. Yeah, I definitely was thinking the kid was like eight, and I'm like, this is sketch, <laughs> sketch <baby." laughs> Yeah. No, I'm totally fine with jumping this before before the meeting. We'll just be on a bit of a time limit then, but. Realistically, we can cover a lot of ground in that amount of time, especially if we take everything by surprise. Go in, identify what's there going on there, and then, you know, bust down the doors, deal with it, and move on to the next. And I prefer we get this over with without involving the Shens, because if something were to happen to them, well, we might be in trouble. Yeah, I agree. I'd uh, adjust my mask a little bit and uh, say, all right, whoever's ready to to do this, let's get what prepping we need to get done and take off. I would laugh at the takeoff comment, and I'll say, well, well like birds like a feather. <laughs> like some raven lunatics. Yes, <laughs> raving lunatics, and I've got a raven. <laughs> right. uh, uh, just to oh, clarify, uh, Brumwell is in fact a female. And none of the dwarves that were outside in that alleyway would. Okay. No, but we know they're going to be at that tavern, the something and drink. Sure, I sailor in and drink. Should we announce ourselves as one of the other guys? Um, I think if we, well, my my only worry with announcing ourselves is, do we want everybody to know that we're the ones taking this out, or do we just want to? 
you know, murder all witnesses and get out. Not murder all witnesses, but, you know, make sure it doesn't spread who we are necessarily. I know if it comes to blow, I, those I believe a bit misdirection would be helpful. Probably not a bad idea. Do we want to say we're from one of the other gangs? Like, jump in and, and uh, you know, try and frame one of the other gangs for this? Maybe put them at odds? If they were just in from uh, the Fire Isle, I'm familiar with, enough with Fireport. Yeah, we could do that. And, I mean, use all the right thought term to insinuate what we're looking for. Yeah, I'll let you do the talking, um, and we can just back you up, because you're kind of the man with the plan, the documenter type stuff. You, A lot of your stuff, I think, would be best if you were kind of not up front to take the damage or anything like that, but you were the one that kind of does the talking, because you might be able to even use your pact type stuff. Well, I wouldn't know any of that. Damn it. Um, yeah, I, I would say I'm <laughs> totally willing to let Cherno take the lead. I might have something under my sleeve as well to encourage it, but I think I might need Alcifat for this one. We know somebody with a taste for the hot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. roll, roll your addiction check. <laughs> yeah, the lost cleric, cleric with an addiction. <laughs> oh, he just wants to feel alive, guys. Be nice. <laughs> Speaking of shady characters, I want to note that Bob is playing himself in this game and he suggested pulling the teeth out of the tavern owner. That is true. <laughs> well, Bob. <laughs> I, I do work in management in a tourism location. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've had to deal with some, some less than savory tourists. <laughs> Watch, all of a sudden we're going to get all these one-star reviews on TripAdvisor talking about how they lost teeth <laughs> last time they visited. No, no, you just say you now off- offer cutthroat dentistry options. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right, so what's the plan right now? Um, I was going to go in with Alphapat, you on my side, and say that we have a taste for the spicier flavors in life, and, but we come from the Fire Isles and are looking to expand, and we only will talk to the Brawl Wild. See what happens. All right, yeah. Let's go. And then Arpeggio and I are wait kind of somewhere nearby outside, uh, acting you like... You might just grab a seat on the end, just yeah. in case. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, That's so funny. Excellent. And in advance, I apologize for the awful puns you are going to hear, both <laughs> our party and listeners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I may or may not have been writing this down in preparation. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you walk your way into the the inn? Yep, we head on to the Shore Eye Sailor Inn and drink. Alright, entering in, Bob, you see those same dwarvish thugs across the road just giving you... Alright, I'm gonna... Uh, yeah, I'll wave at them and give them the same side eye right back. Alright. <laughs> one of them sort of steps forward, almost beginning to come over to you, then the sort of one that the leader puts his arm out and blocks it. Alright. Oh, also, Pat, remind me, what's your weapon? I have... A sword. (laughs) Alright. Alright, so entering in, uh, you see a shambled mess of different uh, bar patrons, all very deep within their drink, sort of heads like uh, pressed hard against the bar counter and against the tables they're at. They appear to be very intoxicated at this point, having continued drinking from the festival the night before. So, I think Altafat and I are going to head towards the barkeep if the other two but we'll wait until the other two grab it alright yeah heading up to the barkeep the other two having a couple of seats around a corner booth uh, the I should mention the barkeeper is a human man uh, sort of curly very short but curly uh, blonde hair with a big moustache and he sees you approaching and says uh, can I get you a drink uh, depends we're we're here for a special kind of Drink, I guess you could say. We're looking for something a little bit spicier than the average. I'm not giving anything more to that addict over there, and he bursts over to Bob. I'm gonna be rubbing my forehead and like, hey, even though I've got the mask on, I'm gonna act like I've got one hell of a headache or like I'm sweating or something like that. Uh, so I'll, I'll be looking like I'm worse for wear at the table. 
it, it's not him. Don't worry about him. We, I don't even know him. We ran into him on the way in. He said he'd buy us a drink if we talked to you. He didn't say about what. No, I'm, I'm talking about my friend here. That's this dragon with a fire in his stomach, but he's got a burning passion for something else. He tried just a little, little earlier on the dock. And me. He kind of looks in deeper towards you. One of his glinting as he's looking at you. Yes. No. I'm. I'm so yeah. I'm pointing to Alphapod here. Be like. And I personally, I'm from the fire. Po- Fire Isles and Fireport specifically. Ooh, let me tell you, we we know how to keep it toasty there. <laughs> he sort of looks around and says, uh, "I wouldn't be given any more to this dragon man, or he's dead." Oh no, man! The fire in this guy's stomach it burns through anything. I once saw him out eat a dwarven well, and dwarf at a dwarven chili contest. You don't mess with the forge that he's got running. <laughs> he says, um, "I think." I will refuse his service, but if you want something, I'm sure we can come to an agreement that does it. For what I'm looking for? He said a to Elsa and then Bob. For what I'm looking for, I, I, I'm not looking for anything for me. I'm looking to talk, talk deals. Maybe make an agreement here or there, but from what I've been told, I can only talk to Bromwell. His eyes sort of both open wide, and he says, um, I have no idea who it is, do Don't, don't get this conversation heated. We're all friends here. I'm happy to buy a few drinks if you want to maybe set something up for this evening. I don't quite understand how you know of Bromwell in this particular situation. It seems very odd and something I should probably... Uh, I think I need to go and stretch my legs and he begins sort of most moving to exit or from around the bar. No, oh, friend, friend, but how am I going to get a drink? Well, this is nothing. This is just between friends. Uh, roll a uh, persuasion check. Or a deception, if you're actually deceiving him. Uh, Which or I... persuading. Yeah. Okay, let me just... Modifier? Man, this guy is so good at inciting people. <laughs> <laughs> 17. Oh, yeah. Beats is five. Uh, <laughs> he sort of slows down a bit as after you say friends, he kind of stops and says, uh... I didn't think they were letting any others into the Ode. I thought they were all dwarves. I'm from the Fire Isles, but they figured too many dwarves, people would start getting suspicious. I mean, do you know anyone hotter than a Fire Tenacity? Right, we are, uh, well, you could say independent contractors. Well, no, not even. A fire, a Bronze Dragon, a Fire Tenacity, no one would ever look twice at us in the Fire Isles. Right. And, uh, what of these two over here? Again, we ran into them outside, and the guy promised us a drink if I talked to you. He didn't even ask to tell me to drink, talk to you about what? He sort of pushes himself back for a moment, seeming like he's had an internal realization. You, you aren't going to be telling, uh, Bromwell what I sold to you, are you? Tell who? And I'll, like, just quite obviously pretend like I have no idea who he's talking about. He said Bromwell. <laughs> Put my hand on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. It's, it's a thing. No, I won't tell anyone anything. I just... I want to have a second to talk to Bromwell. That's it. Nothing more. He, he's looking a bit suspicious towards you and says... She's going to be here in maybe a few hours, but... As long as you... Or you, or you, or you, and points to them. Do not tell her what I sold this one. And he points to Bob. I, I will let you stay around. I'll, I'll make you an even better deal. Don't have to say anything. Don't do anything. Just send me a special drink when Bromwell walked in. Just so you and I know, no one will actually have any idea that we've ever spoken. In the meantime, we'll sit here, enjoy drinks, enjoy some of your food, and enjoy the company of those strange fellows at that booth. He says, um, you, you aren't aware that everyone's being cleared out for... Nope. You haven't been told that. I got told to come here so that I could try and help help Romwell invest her great empire into the Fire Isle, where there is a great need and a lot of corners for a lot of things to be done. I'd say he's starting to get a bit suspicious of you. I'll get you to make a... What do you want? Persuasion or... Uh, Deception. Deception. Thirteen. <laughs> uh, he sort of looks at you, 
there's a I think you lot need to get a bit better and point to... we need her guarded over and I don't want my ass on the line because you guys don't quite know what is going on and that that is fair my good sir well how about this can I just get four four beers something with a spicy touch and we'll sit down and we can pretend this didn't happen he uh, pulls out four mugs and fills them fill, uh, with with beer, not asking for any coin. And he says, uh, and you want some? You, sorry, he asks, you want some? Yeah, you want some sort of hesitantly, like, oh. giving you, like, a little wink? Uh, just, yes. just to preserve our friendship, we'll say no for now. If this right. one gets the jitters, we'll come back. So it's so weird, there's guys across the road. Supposed to be uh, no one in a while, but I'm sure they'll come over and you can clear it back up with them. And Sounds like a plan. All right, and he sort of just turns around, just continuing going about his okay. past out everywhere. So as we go back to the table, I'll whisper to Uncle Fat, like, we got a lot of info. We know the moment this place clears out, that's when we need to be in here. Right. Like, this way we don't have you indisposed of for another 10 minutes, and we know exactly when to hit this place. And well, so far, like, it sounds like maybe the scorch isn't coming from from this gang. Um, the bartender is uh, selling it for sure, but it seems like he's doing it without uh, Romwell's permission. And actually, good point. So you, I mean, I think he must be getting it for someone else, or you know, I'm not meant to say that he's the source. I would doubt he's the source. Let's go see what uh, Bob and our our PGO think. Hey, Bob. Arpeggio. <laughs> yeah. Tell them what happened. Okay. Yeah. Arpeggio. Sorry. Yeah. No. If you if you guys tell us all that, I would be super suspicious that maybe this gang isn't to blame either. I mean, yeah, they're assholes in a gang, but you know, they may not be the ones peddling the drug, like you said. Maybe we wait until everyone clears out, and then when Bromwell's about to arrive, we tell her. But this guy's had a scorch behind her back. Looking around, Braden, is there a, a open second floor window or an open window that would be close enough I could have my familiar wait like right outside of it and listen in on what's going on inside the bar? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, then I would tell everybody that I could, you know, put my familiar right outside one of the windows and uh, we could listen in to what's going on. Uh to try and figure it out once the entire area has been cleared out. That sounds fantastic. Does anyone have contact with the merchant skills? I mean, I talked to that one guy, but... <laughs> <laughs> if only Dandavin was there. Yes. I know. I was just thinking, if there's a ship, small ship coming in, there's a good chance they some sort of records of ships coming and going. We could check. Maybe someone within the within the docks that would uh, keep records of that with their boat. Yeah, I would almost guarantee it. Yeah, perfect. So why don't we leave our bird in the air, eye in the sky here, and let's go have a talk to someone else. Yeah, I command my raven to go perch somewhere near an open window, and uh, I'll follow wherever. All right, All right, the raven flying up into the open, sitting on the little ledge there. Uh, you all exit the tavern? Yep. After drinking the beer and sitting for a bit, so I don't look totally weird. <laughs> I don't <laughs> touch. I don't touch the beer. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> Good choice. As a cockroach runs across the table. <laughs> all right. So exiting out into the street, uh, you make your way up the road, and you meet a uh, small section of dwarves over in the alleyway. Uh, break away from the alleyway and immediately be lost for the doors of the tavern. Ah. Hmm. Not towards, towards you, like but Rumble. towards... Uh, there are, it's the exact same five dwarves that uh, interacted with Bolt previously. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as they sort of rush over there, the lead one opens the door, stand guard at the door itself. And Bob, I only assume you're putting your vision through great... Yeah, I would uh, whisper to the group, I would say, hey, uh, keep walking, uh, ignore my hand on your shoulder. I've got to concentrate, and so we don't look suspicious. You know, I put my hand, like, on the back of Cherno's shoulder or something, 
you know, so I can keep walking. Then I would close my eyes and and have my all my senses go through the raven as we kind of walk away from the tavern. Uh, looking down upon the bar, you see that dwarf enter through quickly sort of beeline for the bar itself. The bar keeps looking very sort of shifty and sort of backing up against the back wall. Uh, the dwarf shouting at him, um, what the hell were you doing with those? The barkeeper just sort of like saying, uh, oh, no, nothing at all, nothing. No, they're, they're your friends, aren't they? They said they were here to uh, meet with Bromwell or something. And the dwarf just sort of like clasps his hand into a fist and bangs it against the table. There's a uh, that's exactly what we're meant to look out for. Bromwell is not meant to... No one is meant to know of their meeting. And they sort of he sort of backs off immediately and makes out into the street with the gang at his back. How far away would you guys... Would you be moving at a brisk pace or just walking slowly? Uh, brisk. Casual. But there we and casual. Trying, trying to get into like any alleyways or you just straight along the road? I wouldn't be able to do, if, if my senses are going through that, I would barely be able to stumble along forward. So uh, I probably wouldn't try it. This, you know, the second I see them run out this way, I would drop that connection. But otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to hide beforehand. Yeah, if I noticed that there was any kind of a confrontation, I would have um, tried to duck into an alley with the rest of the group. All right. Make a stealth check for me, everyone. Okay. This is that. Whopping 12. Yeah, my dice kept rolling. So, 11. Four. Four. Well, <laughs> we are not a stealthy group. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I will do better for, than you. Not sure of what. <laughs> okay, so surprisingly, they managed to spot some of you. Uh, half of the group failed me. Uh, they only got an 8 on their perception check. <laughs> Uh, seeing you duck into that alleyway, you see they're just sort of watching you back and see them kind of like tracing your movements. But as you duck in, you begin running away and you hear some shouting behind you as they begin giving chase and you rush your way through the docks. Is there uh, any Shadow Guild um, safe houses along the way? Uh, there would be a couple of sort of cellar doors that lead down into some pillars and not and that you could make for. Uh, I'd say it'd be roughly 100, 120 feet away from you now. Okay, because, yeah, part of the Shadows Guild is access to safe houses to escape people chasing you. All right. Wow, perfect then. Uh, I'll say... (laughs) Wait, would you you blow your cover that you're part of the Shadows Guild by diving into one of their safe houses with us? Depends. Um, that, like, my understanding is that they're not known, there's just a room, so my whole thing was going like, here, in here, the door was open, kind of, unsuspected. Yeah, that is that is true, the Shadows Guild probably would have, you know, like, it, it wouldn't be that conspicuous. It's just more or less, like, I, it looks like I tried a random door, and it just opened. <laughs> random breaking and entering, I like it. <laughs> and Bob, with your meta knowledge, Bob, you would know that dwarf speed is only 25 feet, whereas all of you have a speed. So with enough, sort of, sort of uh, directional movement where you can avoid their gaze, you should be able to lose yeah. a while, as long as you manage to stealth. Yeah, and I would have my familiar, like, try and dive bomb them and crap on them to, <laughs> to try and distract them. <laughs> it does just that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, right, with, the, with the delay from, from, oh, not from, oh, sorry, with the head dwarf contingent of guards uh, exiting the Tavern slower than what you were when you when you'd already sort of ran into the alleyway. I'd say you managed to get away fairly easily, even with the low stealth rolls, and uh, make your way for that safe house. Perfect. And I'll be like, guys, I don't know where this is. I don't know who owns this place. We should get out before anyone notices. But let's just wait long enough for them to go by. Good right. yeah, so idea. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. That that work for everybody. 18? Yes. Yeah. Alright, so we will wait. <laughs> you in, inside checking Turner? Yep. That's an uh, what, are you, what are you trying to ascertain? Whether or not he uh, he knows about, about this place oh. being here. Uh, it's very convenient. <laughs> it is. Roll a deception <laughs> check, Turner. That's fair. 
I like that. Let's <laughs> okay. see. Ooh, yeah, he's gonna catch. So that is only a 13. Yes, 100%. You know that you see him sort of like running in a position, and then he just quickly turns to the left and around an alleyway, grasping at a set of doors, opens them. It's almost like he's been here before. I can just give it and just give him and just raise my eyebrow at him and don't never speak of it again. Okay, I'll just give him a wake back. back. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Okay. Perfect. Shifty person in here. <laughs> Touche. I'm thinking arpe- arpeggio. Did I get it right that time? That is correct. Perfect. Our, I think Arpeggio should uh, take the lead on talking to the dockhand who reports the ship. I, something about his formal presence makes me think they are going to just trust him. Yeah, I'll, All right. I'll hand those dockhands before. I think I can do a good job on it. Alright, so eventually will you exit your little hiding space, waiting for an appropriate time to uh, leave and make your way to the sort of dockhand that would be in charge with the ship coming in. That was my plan. Alright. Exiting out of the little uh, chamber doors and making your way back into the streets. You'd see far off and looking around, uh, frantically looking for where you went that Mabel and uh, you make your way towards the docks. The actual docks themselves within the docks. Uh, upon arrival you see many sort of fishermen out among their craft uh, bringing in their hauls from the morning of fishing that they have had. And uh, you see a few official sort of people looking over, sort of marking down what everyone's got uh, within their ship and sort of cataloguing the comings and goings of the ship as they enter and leave the port. Would you like to approach one of the dock workers, one of the more official looking? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably looking for... Uh, what's the term for those people? Like managers supervisors yep so you can you can see a number of fairly official looking ones i'll get you to make it ascertain who the most official sort of with the most sort of a uh, instructive nature or something along those lines would be uh roll what what do i roll an insight check that would be a 20 23 <laughs> Oh wow. Uh, yeah, you see one of the sort of centermost docks, uh, there is a female upon there, a half-elf with golden golden hair, who is carrying a clipboard with a bunch of uh, pieces of parchment clipped to it, and she is carrying herself with an air of importance and responsibility not quite displayed by any of the other carrying similar, clip, similar clipboards. Okay, before I approach... Uh... The South Elf, uh, I ask, uh, me, uh, what are we trying to find out again? I look back at the group. <laughs> that one ship coming in, we need to, we need to find the, the smuggling vessel. If it is a smuggling vessel, it makes regular trips back and forth, and if any info on what it's carrying. Um, do we know where this ship is coming from? Do we know there is any ship coming in for... Is it for the Slicers? Yes. Yes, for the Slicers. Yeah, we so also we know that the representatives yeah. of Bayport are coming in. We know it's a small ship. Did, did, did she say if it was, like, legit, or...? It was her first suspicion on the possible source of choice. Yeah, they, so we should probably... She told you that, um, she told you that Taruk, Steeljaw, and the Slicers were getting a delivery on a particular ship this evening. Yeah. Well, we should probably, if we want to see if there's going to be like illicit goods on the ship, we should see if it's on any official log, and that way if it's not, we know it's something illegal coming into the dock. Oh, uh, okay, because there are two ships right now. Got one ship and then a group coming in from Bayport. They probably would have arrived earlier. So probably, so we're looking at, looking into the slicers. Shipment, right? Not Grey Jack. Correct. Because we don't. Because the information we have is very vague, and I'm afraid if we drop in the slicer's name, we would arouse suspicion. We're just looking for small ships that have been coming and going at regular intervals. 
I mean, I came in on a small ship. There should be records of a number of them. Do we... Do we... Were we even told what time the shipment will be? It no, should be late tonight. But, yeah, uh, yeah it is just a small... A small vessel coming into this dock tonight. Um, we should be able to figure out whether whether that ship is like legit or not. I'm, I'm gonna assume that there are, there's a certain time at night where ships no longer come in and out. So anything that comes in after that is probably shady or trying not to be seen. Yeah, and actually, um, with the two lighthouses there, uh, this would be a large enough port and everything that uh, ship travel or uh, cargo ships and stuff would be coming in pretty much 24-7. So it makes smuggling very easy since there isn't a a, a dead time. Alright, so what decision did you come to? Um, I think six our plan. Now, uh, DM, was were we given a time timeline on when the smuggling uh, shipment would come in? Uh, they, the, uh, the matron told you that it would be coming in tonight. Hadn't really received specific details as to much of, uh, just that something was being delivered tonight for the slices. Mm-hmm. It's something to try, but ultimately you're cold. Okay, I walk in, I walk towards the house elf. Alright, uh, you see she's looking over some vessels. Uh, sort of looking over the different crabs and whatnot, having been caught uh, recently, and then sort of having a dialogue with the ship's owner before sort of walking back uh, up the dock and then just standing there, turning around, waiting for another vessel to enter. Good day there. Uh, I am from the city guard, and I'm just making my rounds here. Have you seen... I'm here to ascertain if you have seen any irregularities with the shipments. She just sort of turns to you and looks at you. There's a... Uh, sorry, uh, good morning. I'm not too sure. Well, what exactly do you mean by irregularity? You know what I mean. Smuggling. Have you seen any smuggling? Or are you sus- have seen any suspicious dealings or ship any uncharted ships? coming in and out of the docks. Uh, um, I, I, I don't know exactly your talk. I flip, a, I try to slip a gold coin in their hand. I, oh, uh, I, I know immediately sort of flare and she kind of listens for a second as we begin talking. I know you don't want to be called out. I know that. Being a dog hand doesn't do much, so I'll make sure this doesn't get out. But I need information. I, I, I was paid by the slices and Taruk Steeljaw. He he said he would look after me if I let a dog, uh, let a ship through tonight. And what time and dock would this be? He points a few uh, a few sort of docks over. And no, there is no, no, I tried to stop. Don't be too honest about it. Just nod in a certain direction. She just sort of nods to you and says, uh, that two docks over, there's, they're going to be coming through there, maybe around, just after dark. I think, I'm fairly certain anyway, the ship is out to sea docked somewhere, or in a cove nearby. I think that uh, sending one of their rowboats in. And do they do this regularly? This is the first time for me, but I, uh, I, mean, I haven't spoken to anyone else about it. Okay. I slip her another book. Thank you for your service. And I walk. She sort of grasps it and just is grateful that you aren't going uh, corruption. <laughs> and takes it and sort of nods and turns back around, trying to look as prim and proper as possible and doing her job. I return to the group. Uh, oh. I've got a vague time, but we got a location. All okay. right, great. Yeah, I would uh, then, as soon as we know when it's supposed to, uh, you know, as soon as you tell us all that kind of stuff, um, I would, you know, send my Raven familiar over that direction just to keep watch so we can kind of prepare 
ourselves without having to worry about, you know, early shipments or anything like that, or, you know, see what kind of preparations the different groups are making to transport the goods and that kind of stuff. All right. So your raven finishes pooping on the dwarves. Yes. <laughs> I'm keeping watch over as you all reconvene. All right. To be continued. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Chaos Plan. We really hope that you enjoyed it, and since we are doing group games now, we are going to very quickly start getting episodes out there on a regular basis. If you want to take part, please visit Patreon, donate the $2 a month, and you can get in on this guaranteed. We already have the next batch of players getting ready to go for the next game, and we're already looking at the different DMs that are going to be taking part. Both Braden and Mike have committed to doing games so far. So if you want to get in on that action, please just join our Patreon. Thank you, and we hope to see you next game.